I wanted to teach both of them to sit pretty. And the sit pretty that I wanted was, Phoenix will demonstrate it, Phoenix, pretty. As soon as Raptor lets him. Phoenix, pretty. So that's what I wanted for the sit pretty. So, good old left brain introvert here, doesn't like to offer behaviors. Dance. So I really had to establish the cue because most clicker trainers, the way that you work is you establish the behavior and then you add the verbal cue. Dance. But Phoenix is like, you know what, I really don't want to do anything until you tell me what it is that you want me to do. So for him, on a lot of things, I teach him the cue from the beginning. Phoenix, pretty. And that's just the way that he is. But Phoenix is probably the most lazy, most efficient cat you'll ever meet. He seriously has to really, like, want to do something. As you can tell, he's like, if I get treats by staying up here, I'm just going to stay up here. Raptor, dance. So when I tried to teach Raptor how to sit pretty, like Phoenix, it just didn't work. Raptor, dance. So I changed his behavior to be a much more active one. Raptor, dance. So it's kind of funny how the same behavior turned into two different things based on their, you know, personality types of left brain introvert and right brain extrovert. Raptor, dance. Phoenix, pretty. So with Phoenix, his hand signal, the fist bump, that's not a very good pretty. Raptor, dance. I'll show the different hand signals that Phoenix works with. So Phoenix has to differentiate between two fingers, meaning I want you to go somewhere. So if I knock something twice and point to it, Phoenix, floor. He's like, what are you doing? He might do it, he might not. We haven't done this in a while. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So. A two finger point for Phoenix is telling him to go somewhere. Now you notice Raptor just offered that behavior. He didn't wait for me to cue, which is again a very extroverted thing. So fist bump is pretty. Raptor, dance. Dance. <laughs> you can't really see the look he gives me, but it's like, okay, human, seriously. Then the other one is open palm and high five. High five. So, I do a lot of work with Phoenix for pretty, versus Phoenix, high five, and he's quite good at it, Raptor, dance. Now, they don't like to switch buckets, so we're going to switch buckets on them. 
Retro. Phoenix perch. Well, actually, we'll move. Then we'll move Phoenix. Phoenix. Bucket. And we'll move Raptor. Okay. So now, Raptor. High five. Is something you have to remember with animal training is that they're very, very specific. Just because Raptor dance. So I'm not going to be very demanding over here. My standards are going to be pretty low. Raptor, dance. If he even goes up, he's going to get a click. Because he's used to being on his bucket over there. Raptor, dance. Dance. Raptor, dance. A little bit more, baby. Come on. I know. And that would be claws in the skin. I'll tell you what. Come on, dance. Good boy. Phoenix, pretty. Raptor. Dance. Dance. Phoenix, high five. Yes. Good boy. Phoenix, pretty. Raptor, high five. Raptor, Raptor. <laughs> Raptor, how about some eye contact? There we go, high five. Phoenix, high five. Raptor, oh, there's nothing there. Raptor, high five. Phoenix, pretty. Raptor. Raptor, dance. <laughs> Don't fall off the bucket, my friend. So let's do a little bucket work with Raptor. Raptor, bucket. Now, I have a dream, and that's that by the time Raptor's five years old, I actually want to be able to clip his nails. So, We've been doing a lot of desensitization work in order for me to actually hold his paws.
He is not fond of it at all. You can tell it when the tail starts flipping around. I have clipped his nails a grand total of once, right when I got him. It hasn't happened since then. And that's when he was a cute little two and a half pound tiny kitten. What grumble kitty? What's funny is if you're doing desensitization training, it should look like absolutely nothing to the observer. It should look like a completely calm animal just sitting there while you're petting him or doing whatever to him and just feeding him treats. And so to the outside observer it doesn't really look like anything, but it's often a huge amount of work. He's about to pull it back. Ooh, he left it there. So you kind of have to like pick what you're going to do in training sessions too, because if I tried to do this at the beginning of a training session, you alright baby boy? One big difference about working with cats and dogs? Dogs being a pack animal, you can intimidate, intimidate a dog or put a dog in submission or something like that. And, you know, they'll, they might let you. Like, if you want your cat to come to you, if you have your dog, want, if you want to yell at your dog and tell him to come right here, come right here, come to my, you know, and like make him come and cower at your feet. The dog will do it. Cats? Not a chance. If your cat doesn't like you, or if it doesn't want to be with you, or if it's not having a good time, or if it's afraid of you, you will never see that animal. So, are you done? How about a high five? So, because he was getting so vocal when I was just reaching for his feet, it's like, alright, 